Hey and welcome back to another Darkfall tutorial. Today we're going to be creating an animated flag as you can see in the example here. In part one we're going to be creating the flag and then animating it and in part two we're going to add a little bit of detail to it so maybe add a few holes and make it look as if it's been through a battle. So the first thing you want to do is shift A and add in a cylinder and then we press numpad one to go into front view, select the camera and press H so we can hide it for now. Press numpad five we can go into orthographic view. So now we can scale this down and then scale it on the Z. This is going to be our flagpole. And we go to camera view. And with the flagpole selected, if we press G, we can move this around. I just want to position it maybe to the left a little bit. And now I want to select the camera, but it's already hid it's been hidden. So if we press Alt H, we can unhide the camera. Now I can move this around. I want to rotate this on the X a little bit, so as if we're looking up from the ground. Something like this should be fine. Okay, so I'm just going to add a bit more geometry to the flagpole, it's not going to be anything too special, so I'll speed this part up. I'm just going to add maybe a circle and um, bevel the top bit, something simple. You'd obviously want to <laughs> take a bit more time when you do it yourself for your project, but for this example it's not going to be too bad. I was also having a little trouble with the bevel here, I'm not sure why, maybe because I've already extruded it. So I just uh, beveled it a little bit and then just manually moved this around. Nothing too special. I also smoothed it as well. So now you can go ahead and add in your plane. Um, just shift A and add in a plane. And we need to rotate this. So if we press R, then X, then 90. We can rotate that. And we hit enter as well. So now we can go ahead and position the plane. So let's just move this over down a bit, let's scale this up. We also want to scale it on the X and just reposition it. Maybe scale it a little bit more until you're happy with it. <laughs> okay, so that should be fine for now. So the first thing we do is save it. Make sure you save it since we're adding a uh, simulation to it now. And what we want to do is if we come over to the physics tab, so we just stretch this out. And then over here at the very end, we've got the physics tab. And what we can do if we select uh, cloth, this will choose the cloth simulation for it. And if we hit Alt A, this will play through the, uh, the simulation. We see it just drops to the ground. And since there's no ground, it'll just continue to fall. So we need to define the points where it's going to be held. So let's press tab and then go into edit mode. Press W and subdivide this a few times. You don't want to subdivide it too many times, uh, otherwise it'll slow down your computer quite a bit. We can also add a subsurf modifier to it later on um, to make it smoother. But now we want to define the points where it's going to be pinned. So under vertex group, we're going to add a new group. So tap back into edit mode, select vertices select mode. So we can select a couple of these vertexes here, or vertices. <laughs> so select maybe these three, and then, I don't know, maybe these three down here. Let's try this one instead. That should be fine. So now we've got these selected, we want to actually make the vertex group. So if we go over and we go down here to vertex group, we press this plus button. So I did it a new group, but we need to assign it. So we press assign. Since we have those vertices selected, it's going to assign them. So you can make sure they work by deselecting everything and then press select here. It shows you which ones are, yeah, which ones are assigned to the group. So now we've got them, we can actually tell the cloth sim to use it. So let's go back to cloth sim and down on the pin, uh, pinning, select pinning and then choose the group. So now when we press Alt A, we can see that the pinned from the top and the bottom. All right, we just still have a few more problems to fix. It goes through the pole and it's very blocky, <laughs> but we can change that. That's not a problem. At least it's, uh, it sticks in place. That's the first step. So the next thing we want to do is add some self collision and um, the cloth itself doesn't really collide with itself. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. So just under cloth collision, we want to self collide or self collision. So as you can see, the cloth sort of uh, collides with itself a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, it might not make sense. I probably didn't explain that better. Uh, I probably could have explained that a little bit better, but ho hopefully you understand. So now we select the pole. We can also give that a collision under physics. So now when we press Alt A, we can see that the cloth collides with the pole, so it doesn't sink through it.
So you'd only want to put a collision on the, on the objects if they're going to collide with it. If you're going to add some wind to the scene, you probably won't need that. So let's just move this back over. What you can do, you can add, uh, model some geometry as if there's a hook or a pulley system. Um, but I'm just going to add it to the pole. Pretty basic. So press Alt A, see how it looks. So we will add a subsurf modifier later on. We can hit smooth now and it, yeah, it still looks terrible. But if we add a subsurf later on, this will look uh, perfect. So don't worry about that. Okay, so now we have that done, let's make sure you save it so it in case it crashes, you can always come back. I'm going to shift A and let's add in a force field. And pretty much any one of these will give you a good job, but we want to use wind. And it's added this wind element in now. So by default, the winds, um, it pushes on the Z axis, so upwards on the Z. So we want to rotate this on the Y, 90 degrees. And you can see that there's a little orange arrow which sort of indicates where the wind's blowing. So we zoom right in and I'll show you. I also have these rings here to show you the strength of the wind. So right now it's set to 1, which is probably going to do nothing to this flag. So we just press Alt-A, jump, the, the, jump to the first frame and then press Alt-A. Yeah, that wind's pretty much doing nothing. So we'd actually need to bump this up. And it all depends on what scene you're going for. Is it going to be very windy? It's going to be a little bit windy. This um, depends on the strength. We also want to rotate the wind. So if we press R and then X, and then, sorry, R then Y, and just rotate it up slightly. We also want to rotate it on the Z axis, just a very small amount, so that the wind can yeah, blow the flag a little bit to the left and right. A bit more variation to it. So now if we press Alt A, we can see there's still not enough uh, wind in the scene for me. I want it to be quite windy. So I'm just going to bump this up to maybe 200, maybe a bit more. That looks okay. And again, you can increase it a lot more and make it completely windy. I'm just going to increase the strength a bit more. That looks good. And you also want to um, play around with the noise values as well. Just so it gives you a bit more of a different feel to it. And you also might want to animate these values to give you a completely different look over the course of the animation. So that's entirely up to you. Uh, this looks fine for me right now. Let's jump back to the first frame. And what we can do, tab into edit mode. I'm just going to add one more subdivision just to show you the difference. Um, it slows down my computer quite a bit. Just show you now. Save that first. See the uh, frames per second, the playback, it's really, really slow. And the quality that it's giving me, it's not giving me that much more quality. So I can just add a subsurf modifier to it later on. Um, so that's the reason, just showing you the reason why you don't want to add too many faces. Okay, so let's go back to the uh, physics tab. And what we want to do, under um, the field weights, we can reduce the gravity. And we'd, I'm going to do this because at the start of the animation, we don't want the flag to drop completely. We just want it to be in motion. I mean, we don't want to get rid of the gravity completely. We want it to be there a little bit. But um, for me, I think that looks fine. Okay, what we can also do, um, go through all the settings and make sure you're happy with everything. But we want to bake it now. And so it doesn't take too long every time. So I've already got one here, so I don't need to add a new one. Just delete that one. And we want to set the start and end frames. So say it starts at a different time and it ends at a different time. You want to make sure that's set. And then just hit bake. So I'm just going to press bake now. And I'll pause it because it's going to, probably going to take a, a few minutes to do. Okay, so it took about five minutes, I guess, maybe, to, uh, to do. And it looks fine. It plays back fast enough now. So we can go ahead and add in a, a texture. Very simple, you, most of you probably already know how to do this by now. Just add a new image texture. And let's split this window. This can be the node editor. Get rid of this sidebar by pressing N. And what we could do is split this again. This one can be the UV image editor. And we can get rid of that. Okay, so um, the image I'm going to use is probably going to just be a basic one. Uh, for, the, for the part two, I'll probably create a new image. I'll just use this one for now, which is the, yeah, it's the channel 
logo, I guess. <laughs> the Darkfall channel logo. And it'll look fine, I just want to show you how it works on the flag. Tab into edit mode, and then we want to U to unwrap, and we want to go to project from bound. Okay, so now if we switch this over to the material tab, we can see that, uh, yeah, it works fine. And we play through as well, and it works perfect. So if you want to jump over to part two, we can, we can add some holes to the uh, to the scene and make it look a little bit more, a little bit better. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully this helped.